it hasn't been too long since I did one of these videos where I like to fill you guys in a little bit on what's going on with Gengo no Tabi and what we want to do and uh, just talk to you. Uh, people have recommended that I get a little more personal uh, about what's going on with me and that, but I don't do that because I never considered Gengo no Tabi to be about me. Jessica and I started Gengo no Tabi uh, a couple years ago, and it was meant to be a collective project for Japanese students to share resources, study techniques, and to and adventures along the journey. That's why I call us pilgrims, because uh, as the title, Gengo no Tabi, Language Journey, suggests in a stylistic manner, we are on a journey to learn the language. I've been studying Japanese for almost five years now. Since we started out, Gengo no Tabi has changed a lot. And a lot of people have been a part of it. Presently, the senseis that have done things for Gengo no Tabi and worked with us are Masa, Mimi, Ryan, Kenta, Akiko, Sam, Taiga, and I will be joining us soon, I believe. It is a beautiful autumn in Portland here right now. I just moved here a couple months ago, as I told you guys recently. And uh, as soon as I moved here, I joined the local Japanese language club, and that is um, very cool. Uh, it's the first time I was a member of the Japanese language club. And we get together at a local Japanese restaurant once a month, and there's other little meetings. Um, anyhow, as I was saying, Gengen Otabi is a collective project, and uh, we always wanted the viewers to be a real part of it uh, through commenting and sharing what they're doing, and you can even send in video if you feel like um, grabbing your phone camera and turning it on yourself or whatever and making a video about what you're doing, uh, anything about your Japanese language studies, uh, and you send that in to me raw. I'll process it and turn it into a, the best video production I can. And I'll show it to you before I post it. Just a thought, if anybody wants to do that, that would be really cool. Um, what else did I want to say? Uh, regarding all the different senseis we have, somebody made a comment recently about the vernacular. One of our senseis, it was... Uh, Oh, no, Kenta, Kenta Sensei, he uh, is Kansai, and somebody suggested that it isn't good to learn Japanese from somebody from the Kansai region, because it's not the standardized Japanese language. Um, I don't believe that at all, um, and I don't think there's any point in arguing if you believe that that's fine, but uh, if, for example, if you study for years and then you join the JET program, the JET program is not going to send you to Tokyo, most likely. <laughs> They're going to send you to some rural area that's most common with JET. And uh, there's a very good chance it's going to be some regional vernacular. And so you have no clue where you're going to end up in Japan and how they're going to be speaking. And I think as a student of the language, you shouldn't shun anybody's instruction when you get down the road and maybe you move to an area, you can pick that local accent and style of speaking and master it if you want. In the meantime, I personally see no sense in that. Anyhow, our senseis are from Hokkaido, the Kansai region, Tokyo, and a few other areas. And so, it's not all the Tokyo accent. I'm happy for it. <laughs> uh, another thing I want to talk about is uh, uh, native versus student. A lot of people are really hung up on whether uh, somebody's speaking exactly like a native Japanese person or not. And I guess what I would say is if you know anything about language, Japanese speakers and English speakers, if you, for example, are an English speaker, 
do in general speak pretty poorly most of the time. We speak sloppily. Uh, if you're a student of the language and you're in textbooks every day, you might say, I am going to go to the store. If you're a native English speaker, you may say something to the effect of, I'm going to go to the store. Very sloppy. And it's the same thing with Japanese. Uh, many students speak very perfect, beautiful Japanese, and many native speakers speak very sloppy. If you watch Japanese movies, you know that. <laughs> um, so, uh, I, uh, most, I like to use native speakers because a lot of viewers like that, and it's really hard to be critical of the Japanese if it's a native speaker because, and people are sometimes very critical of the exact nature of lessons. So, um, oh, uh, as I said, we really appreciate comments. And um, if you notice watching the videos, every one of them I do differently. Every lesson is constructed differently. And they're manifold. And by that I mean when I do a lesson, I introduce each phrase in Ramaji, English, Kana, Katakana, and I present it in a few different ways so that it's not just flashed up there and moving on. It's like a lesson. It's thorough and uh, it's meant for studying. So please leave comments if you think that something could be done better with the lesson so that you could understand them better and that please leave constructive criticism. I will definitely, I watch every Japanese YouTube instructional channel that I can find. I try and pick up new ideas and evolve in what I'm doing as the editor for Genlo no Tabi. Another thing I wanted to say as far as uh, learning on YouTube videos. YouTube as a study tool has certain features like the pause. The pause feature is very critical. Sometimes people say, could you leave up the uh, screens with the text on them longer? Um, there's no point in that because you can pause it if you want to read it. And if I left up every screen of text until you could study it thoroughly, well, the video would be 45 minutes long. <laughs> uh, and another thing, there's many aspects of YouTube that you need to master to really use it as a powerful study tool. But another very important one that some people don't utilize enough is the description box. Um, you can't cut and paste from the screen, so I put all the text into the description box so it can be cut and paste into a translator or a dictionary, and you can analyze the text further. So, always look in the description box. Sometimes it is the most valuable part of the whole study. How's my hair? All right, welcome back. <laughs> it's another beautiful fall day here in Portland, Oregon. I had to stop filming the other night because it got too dark and I was home. Okay, where was I? I was talking about YouTube as a tool for studying Japanese. And I think I already spent too much time being long-winded on that. I guess, though, I would conclude that by saying I think a lot of us don't take YouTube seriously as a Japanese language study tool. We use it as a little escape from uh, our normal studying. And so I do the same thing a lot. Um, I think that a lot of videos don't really lend themselves to make me feel like studying them, especially if it's vocabulary. I think there's a lot better ways to study your vocabulary than in a video. Uh, I do think some lessons can be presented very well in a video format. And uh, then if the content of the YouTube video and the presentation as a methodical study invites me to stay and study, then I tear it up. I play it over and over again. I look up everything in it. And um, I really appreciate those. Uh, 
Oh, one other thing about YouTube as a study tool. Uh, it, um, you can do screen links in YouTube, not the links in the description box, but the ones that are in the screen, and those can't be done on a phone. That I know of to this date, there are no smartphones that will allow you to link on a um, embedded screen link. And uh, I've used them a lot in um, Gengo no Tabi. And I think it's hurt me a little bit because so many people watch YouTube videos now on their phone and uh, if your video absolutely has to be watched on a computer then you're shooting yourself in your foot and you're just I guess not helping your viewers that refuse to use a computer to watch the videos. Uh, anyhow what I've done with that of course is the labyrinth. For any of those of you who don't know what the labyrinth is it's a huge network of linked videos on Gengo no Tabi channel that what they do is they have a Japanese speaker say a phrase to you and then you click the link I understood or I didn't understand the phrase if you didn't understand the phrase it directs you to a lesson after the lesson on that phrase it'll allow you to jump back into the next phrase if you click that you understood the phrase in the first place you go on to the next phrase and you can go through a whole thread of 10, 20, 30 videos like that and then you go to an area where they present a whole bunch of other threads. So I made Gingo no, I made the labyrinth over a long period of time, and so the first threads are low resolution, different links, and it just evolved along the way till finally I had really nice glossaries and they were HD and uh, and the links were nice. And so please check out the labyrinth. It is a great study tool. I don't think there's anything else like that on YouTube that I know of. If there is, please, in the description box, tell me about it. Um, most of Gengo no Tabi channel is not visible when you look at it. It's all unlisted videos that are networked to the labyrinth. There's about six entrances to the labyrinth, and that's it. And the number of videos in the labyrinth, number near 300 or something. Anyhow, the other type of video I did that I think is completely unique once again, I call um, INNLV, Internal Network Nonlinear Videos. The uh, Happy Sushi is the first example of that, number one, two, and three. Happy Sushi is a dining experience in a restaurant. You click, you watch the video, and every time somebody says something, if you didn't understand it, you click a button that's next to them. The button will bring you to a lesson that's in that same video. It'll jump you to it. And once you finish watching that lesson, you click the button, return button, and it brings you right back to the same spot you left. Um, each of the uh, Happy Sushi internal network nonlinear videos were a huge project. And they are a really good lesson. Taiga is the main sensei and Sam in that one. And uh, great lesson. Once you watch those, you know most of the language that you would use in a Japanese restaurant to order and everything and pay everything. And if you want more, go into the um, labyrinth. And the labyrinth has a couple threads on restaurant phrases done by Masa and others. And they're very thorough. Good stuff. Um, once again, none of that can be viewed without a computer. If you try it on your phone, the links aren't there and you're just, you, you see the things to click on, but you can't do it. Moving on. Um, what we're doing now, conversational uh, Japanese series, I am so happy with. I think that uh, this is the best thing, if not the most original, <laughs> that uh, I've done, we've done, on Gengo no Tabi, because Everywhere I study online, and I study all over the place and have for years, uh, there's a lot of different types of phrases, but rarely are there the common phrases that you see all the time in the first couple of minutes of speaking to somebody you just met. Those are just neglected. People focus on how to catch a cab, how to get a hotel room, how to get the police, uh, stuff like that. And uh, so... Um, been 
enjoying doing these a great deal, and I'm watching them over and over because I don't know all this stuff. And uh, anyhow, they're still going on. We're on number four right now. I'm working on number five. There's like at least three senseis involved so far and a couple that you haven't seen yet. Um, I'm really excited about that stuff. I'm doing another a remake of Say What that Masa and I did, uh, which teaches you how to understand when somebody's saying they don't understand what you're saying. Maybe not real motivating, but that will occur. And uh, there's a million, well, there's a lot of ways to say it. And uh, so I think it's an important video, personally. Uh, another thing we're doing coming up is sentence formulas. I want to do sentence formulas that is uh, just like A, W, B, D, E, S. You know, that's a basic formula that allows you to say so many things. And uh, you can learn that formula without discussing grammatical terms or getting real complicated. And um, there's a million formulas like that. And if you're having a hard time studying grammar because it's just too dry and complicated for you, then you can learn formulas and uh, learn how to communicate the ideas that you want to communicate with the vocabulary you already have. Um, oh, I'm going to start doing kanji stuff soon. I've been trying to study kanji for years and I always get overwhelmed. It's so daunting. And uh, I think I've found some really good resources now and I have some ideas of what didn't work for me and what did. And I need your motivation. I think that I'm not the only one that does this, that wants to learn kanji, knows how important it is, but keeps getting stuck or keeps getting mired down. So I think that we can motivate each other. Um, please write in the comments if you're game for getting on board with me and sharing your ideas on how to study and communicating back and forth in the comments box and emails about our push forward to make this happen. And uh, um, it's something I want to do and it's something I will do because uh, making the videos helps motivate me and it helps me learn and, uh, and such. Um, what else do I got? I've probably lost everybody by now. Except you. Thanks for sticking around. Um, so, uh, the whole basis of Gengo no Tabi in the beginning was to be for beginners by beginners. And it's moved away from that. We have a lot of senseis and a lot of lessons. It's not just a resource share. But it's still important to remember, and I've heard this confirmed by a lot of people like the author of um, Making Sense of Japanese and other resources that Japanese people aren't necessarily the best at teaching Japanese. They learned it inherently as a child. You learned English maybe if English is your native language as a child and so you're not necessarily the best teacher of it. You don't know how you learned it and you don't really even understand how you use it. It's just innate. And um, people who are fluent, a lot of them like one of my senseis the other day was telling me he learned living in Japan when he was young and he just absorbed it because he lived there and he was young and he doesn't even remember when it was difficult. Thanks. He doesn't even remember when it was difficult. He doesn't remember struggling with it. And that's very commonly the case. If you're fluent and you've been speaking Japanese for a long time, you don't remember the struggles that I'm going through right now. It's distant past. You don't remember all the little hurdles you overcame in the 5, 10, 20 years you were learning the language. So, let's stick together. Let's share what we're doing. Let's share our resources and our ideas. And let's share when we're frustrated and when we're making breakthroughs. Let's, uh, uh, like I said, send in some video if you want. Thanks for viewing. And when you guys tell me in the box that a video helped you, it means so much to me because uh, um, other than Gengo no Tabi being an artistic outlet for me and somewhere work to expand my abilities, video editing, and to help me learn Japanese, it also um, makes me feel awesome if me and the gang can help you guys out because I definitely can't help you out alone. Once again, thanks for viewing. Leave a comment in the comment box.